Monday, the 21st day of March 2011. We're going to be live here for at least the next three hours with some of the um, gravest information uh, ever developing out of the Middle East and North Africa. Also, the ongoing whitewash and cover-up uh, unfolding in Japan, centering in and around the Fukushima 6 nuclear reactor complex. Also, it is in the news, U.S. Army kill team in Afghanistan posed for photos of with murdered civilians. Commanders braced for backlash of anti-U.S. sentiment that could be more damaging than Abu Ghraib scandal. Will the U.N. call for invading the United States because their military is engaged in atrocities? Certainly not. But you are seeing and hearing that now coming out of North Africa. And I have the NBC headline here, Illinois National Guard heads to Libya. And, of course, there are two Marine Corps amphibious landing aircraft carriers uh, off uh, the coast. The bombardments, the hundreds of cruise missiles, the bombings, the attempted assassination of Muammar Gaddafi. That's quite a uh, no-fly zone. And lots of arrested development men feel very manly and feel powerful through the New World Order uh, as they buy their 12 packs of beer and go home and uh, watch the explosions. They are cheering and running around happily as the very same bankers taking over uh, from a lower-level minion, a lower-level uh, corrupt individual, a lower-level uh, strong man, Muammar Gaddafi, the very same banksters are robbing you at the same time. And they'd love to drop cruise missiles on your head if they thought they could take over uh, some uh, living space, some territory uh, in doing it. So that is all coming up. Here's the really bad news, and I began to cover this yesterday. The media is now in overdrive right now. The media is now in hyper overdrive, hyping attacks by Muammar Gaddafi. So you go in and you attack Gaddafi, then you stage terror attacks that legitimize your full bore uh, invasion that's already building up uh, the preparations for uh, off their coast. And then it legitimizes your war and allows you to crack down on your real prey, the 300 million Americans who you're putting through slave training, dog training, of uh, taking uh, your, your shoes and belt off and your jacket off and having the government grab your genitals and then put you in a radiation baker. It uh, will work quite nicely for them. U.S. eyes Gaddafi terror response. Of course, uh, it's on record, and that was in my stack yesterday. Will you guys pull me the London Telegraph and the PrisonPlanet.com article about al-Qaeda leading the attack on Gaddafi? It's admitted that al-Qaeda out of Egypt and Saudi Arabia uh, are running the operation against Muammar Gaddafi. And so we're going to be going uh, over that as well. Meanwhile, SAS smash squads are on the ground in Libya to mark targets for coalition jets. So the troops are on the ground. Of course, that's why the SAS went in weeks ago, as we told you, was to laze targets and to call in grid coordinates uh, for cruise missiles, uh, fighter bombers, uh, and drones to drop their loving humanitarian uh, payloads on the populations. Uh, but hey, uh, uh, will our country, controlled by the globalists, now invade Syria? Wave of unrest shakes Syria. Crowds torch party headquarters. And you better believe that's the black op teams inside Syria implementing what they did two years ago, trying to overthrow Iran. It's on. Oh, the Iranians are crushing people. Invade. The Syrians are crushing. Invade. Bombard. This is World War III unfolding. World War III in regions all over the Middle East, Central Asia, bombardments, invasions. But it's humanitarian. And it's also a nice little distraction for the nuclear radiation fallout intensifying as it heads across the Pacific towards the United States' west coast. It's all coming up today. Stay with us. Infowars.com. Do you understand how dark it is? How far down the line we are? How late it is? at Infowars.com, PrisonPlanet.com, as well as DrudgeReport.com. You can see the civilians, including a young boy, 
uh, tortured and murdered uh, dead with U.S. kill teams posing like they've just bagged a 12-point white-tailed deer on Grandpa's back 40. Because in America now, being manly is about loving the image of countries being bombed, loving the image of death and skulls and annihilation. Don't worry, U.S. military, that are part of the kill teams. You think you're big and bad and evil? The big bankers that run you and use you to power their world government? Eleven years ago, they signed the deal with the insurance companies to steal all of your death benefits. Hundreds and hundreds of billions of dollars that you'd paid in. Don't worry, they're going to destroy your dollar. Don't worry, they're going to destroy your private property rights. Don't worry, they're passing laws to shut down small family farms and ranches. Don't worry. What comes around goes around. You think evil's cool? You think not having a rule of law is powerful? You think it's dark and mystic and chic and powerful and has majesty to be into? Uh, remember what Private Gruckheimer in the Ithaca Times, now nine years ago, he came back from Afghanistan after his first tour, told the paper, we go into villages, we kill men, women, and children, including toddlers. And the Pentagon came out a day later on Fox News and said, we want to clarify, we only kill everyone in certain villages. Yes, we walk up to newborn babies and shoot them with M16s. They go in and they take children and they line them up and they just shotgun them laughing. <laughs> and the Army's own report from Abu Ghraib, where they take the children in front of their parents and they get the battery acid and they pour it into their orifices and they engage in satanic death and evil. Oh, all in the name of America. And then the U.S. government releases the photos to further destroy America's name as part of the end game. And America takes it hook, line, and sinker like a big bass who's had a purple worm drop down in front of him. There's a big Wall Street Journal article today about why do we let them dress that way. In fact, I forgot to print that. Print it for me. Why are 10, 11, 12-year-old girls now dressing as prostitutes as the new style? Because MTV, it came out five years ago, had a plan to do that, to sexualize the preteens, the tweenies. And parents buy into that death as well. It's all engineered for societal death. Because once they've got your morals, once they've got you to become seduced by the dark side, you are weak, you are blind, you are, have no discernment, and you will fall. It is the Bill of Rights. It is const the Constitution. It is the rule of law. It is all of those hedges of protection that protect the great jewel of liberty that Thomas Jefferson talked about uh, must be protected at all cost. And that jewel of liberty has now been shattered and thrown into a million different pieces. And now the shields are falling. Evil and judgment is flowing in as radiation begins to bathe the United States. And the media tells you it's actually good for you and Coulter and others. And as every blessing we had is sucked dry by the vampires, the psychic vampires of the New World Order. And you walk into the gas station or you walk into the corner bar and they've got the war on, not sports, and they're high-fiving every time a cruise missile hits. <laughs> Woohoo! I actually heard it in the gas station Saturday. Woohoo! High-fiving! Man, the bankers can break international law. The, the U.N. can violate its own charter. Woohoo! They can try to assassinate some little petty dictator. Oh, they can send the special forces in with al-Qaeda backing the whole operation. And everybody can celebrate and have a wonderful time and feel big and powerful. I want to show TV viewers a document cam shot before others. Just go to the London Telegraph. The West and al-Qaeda on the same side in Libya. Statements of support for Libya's revolution by al-Qaeda and the leading Islamicists have led to fears that military action by the West might be playing into the hands of its ideological enemies. Uh, Al-Qaeda was created by the CIA and British SAS, <clears throat> along with Pakistani and Israeli intelligence on record. Brzezinski's written two books bragging about it. They were used as the pretext to invade the Serbs, the Muslim extremist attack out of Albania, led by Osama bin Laden on record. The U.S. and NATO bombed the power plants, the water plants, the uh, factories for peaceful aircraft and cars. They blow Serbia into the Stone Age. They bomb all their major cities with DU. 
They roll in with Al-Qaeda, and Al-Qaeda began massive ethnic cleansing of the Serb Christians, and our media went, woohoo! And it was all done off of a hoax. All done off of a hoax of a UN facility with one guy that had hepatitis standing trying to get into the food facility, and they said that was people in a camp when they were people looking in from the outside. It turns out the British News asked the guy to take his shirt off. Just like Saddam had babies in incubators. When they were throwing the babies out of the incubators and clubbing their heads, now admitted a total lie. Just like WMDs in Iraq. All lies. And here it is, Al-Qaeda pouring in out of Saudi Arabia. Give me a document cam shot, please. Libya being, being overrun by Al-Qaeda. Look at that nice young man there with his ski mask on. Nice, nice person. Of course, here's our article came out before theirs. U.S. government backs Libya and Al-Qaeda while hyping terror attacks inside the U.S. And that's the big news now in the New York Times today. Bracing for Gaddafi to hit us with terror. He might actually try it. But more likely, the globalist will simply activate some sleeper cells of useful idiots or actual operatives. They'll blow some stuff up, and the TSA will say, see... We're putting you in the naked body scanners. We're setting up highway checkpoints. We've got all the local police trained for civil emergency. That's the code word, buzzword for martial law. See, we told you. And then, oh, we've got to invade. How dare Gaddafi hit Chicago at the Sears Tower now owned by Larry Silverstein. How dare him hit L.A.? How dare him hit New York? How dare him hit Dallas? How dare him... Don't worry, the Marines just so happen to be off the coast in their giant amphibious attack systems that offload the hovercraft and the rest of it. They're ready to invade for America, Team America. Oh, yeah. We're going to get those guys. Meanwhile, Gaddafi defeated the Al-Qaeda, Egyptian, Saudi Arabian-backed forces, but it doesn't matter. We're bracing right now for Gaddafi. Everybody's here on the news. That dirty rat's going to try to hit us with an Al-Qaeda. Meanwhile, Al-Qaeda works for the globalist. They get to take over countries. They launch them on. They start wars with the Russians with them. In 1979, they start wars. You're not told about it until 83. They start wars with the Serbs with them. And if you defend yourself, it doesn't mean the Serbs were angels. It doesn't mean Gaddafi's a good guy. The point is it's part of a larger operation. And people are given this false moral reason but then, meanwhile, U.S. Army kill teams posing with the dead women and children. It's so manly. It's not a sad thing when you accidentally kill a kid. No, it's something to be proud of. In fact, you kill them on purpose. And then you pose with the dead little boy, their bloody body lifting the head up, smiling there with that dead corpse in civilian clothes, just like... Private Gruckheimer said, we go into villages and we kill the babies. We kill the women. And the army comes out, the Pentagon comes out on Fox News 2002 and says, well, only in certain villages. And those guys are all coming back to be cops and TSA workers, an army of darkness, an army of hell. And don't worry, uh, it's now come out in federal court, Blackwater in Iraq, huge coke parties, men running around naked together, running around naked outside in major downtown areas, firing into homes, into cars, and just orgies of bloodletting. The Iraqis reported it at the time. They said, who are these people? Is this the army of Satan? And yes, it is the army of Satan. America, the biggest user of drugs, the biggest user of porn, the biggest uh, you know, divorce rate, everything degenerating into pure evil, and everyone just loving it and worshiping it and worshiping the football and the sports and the dirtier the comedy, the better, just debasing everything so we can be turned into servile, mindless, gibbering atomized animals who can't defend each other, who don't have rudders, who don't have compasses intellectually or morally or spiritually, who can't communicate, who won't stand up for each other, who laugh at videos of cops beating people to death or shooting citizens in the back. Total judgment being prepared to be poured out as America begs to be destroyed.
that don't worry. The bankers know how to deliver judgment. God always delivers his people into the hands of the wicked as judgment. You want judgment? You think evil, sexy, and cool? We are going to get what the Iraqis got tenfold in different ways. The radiation, the fluoride in the water, the poison, the deadly vaccines. You think the globalists pouring out death and dropping fire on men, women, and children's heads and lining children up to murder them and UN troops in every country caught murdering and raping children. It constantly comes out in the news. You think these armies of hell are going to stop? No. They're abused, breathing DU, running around demonically, enjoying their own destruction. It's a spirit of trampling and being trampled upon. A servile spirit of weakness and defeat and, and, and the dull, burning eyes of evil. That's what you want. That's what you get. This is what you want. This is what you get. This is what you want. Depression pain, suffering, cancer rates up by 3,000%, diabetes up by over 1,000% and growing, uh, juvenile onset of brain disorders, people getting Alzheimer's when they're 30, your neighbors dying to your left and right, disease spreading, allergens in the food, GMO, death, destruction, pain, judgment, war, fire, stench, rotten bodies. You want it, you've got it. What Hitler gave you, you're going to get it. What Stalin gave you, you're going to get it. What Mao gave you, you're going to get it. You want it, they're going to give it to you. You love laying down to corruption. You love giggling about it. You love thinking it's funny. You love deception. You love being deceived. They've got greater deceptions for you. They've got greater scams for you. Do you realize how deadly dangerous it is when shows like 24 in the last eight years glorified torture? When the media pushed it, when Rumsfeld talked about how great it was, when Bush wrote a book last year bragging about it, they are selling you on evil so that you will accept being part of an evil empire. And so you will accept your neighbors being abused and yourself being abused. They are destroying every basic protection against oppression and slavery. Things are serious, focused, hardcore forefathers understood they'd been through oppression they'd been through a war against the greatest empire i'm getting chills right now it's so sad how far we've slumped the lies about how this is humanitarian about how Gaddafi was going up against peaceful crowds went on record it was nato british french u.s backed special forces in there commanding al-qaeda out of saudi arabia and egypt not even debated and now, I mean, there's Al-Qaeda, who was used against the Serbs, used against the Russians, being used again. And the public doesn't even put two and two together. It's in mainstream news, CNN, London Telegraph, as a footnote, going back four years ago, and then again two years ago. The White House put out public statements saying they were using four rebel groups on the eastern border of Iraq with Persia, with Iran, to launch attacks in the country. And the U.S. Special Forces were on the ground in Iran. Acts of war! Telling us that Iran's going to launch terror attacks on us. This isn't our government. This isn't our military. Your son or daughter may be in the military, may be a great person. It'd be like a nice person who was German in the German military in 1940. Okay, the, the country is run by crooks. It's not America doing this. And we better hit our knees and repent and also publicly say, not in our name what's going on. Yeah, Gaddafi's been in power for 41 years. He looks like a goofball, but he's a strong man who's handed out millions of guns to his people. He's preparing for invasion. They're clearly got an invasion set. There's special forces there, admittedly, for over a month. The invasion forces are off the coast. And the way they're acting is they may stage a terror attack and blame it on Gaddafi and then legitimize a crackdown domestically and more police state as we go into the Depression. What did Rand Corporation say three years ago that Paul Watson wrote about? Made big national news. Because we're some of the only people that will actually read government reports and write about it. Rand Corporation said in the next few years to get out of the Depression, we need a large war bigger than Iraq, a full regional war. How do they do it? They fund radical groups who, sure, I'm sure have beefs with the government. These are corrupt Arab governments, every one of them a dictatorship, either whether it's run by royalty or an oligarchy. And they fund them 
in Saudi Arabia, in Bahrain, in Egypt, in Libya, uh, in Jordan, friends and enemies. And, and by the way, the Bahrainian government, big allies with the West, are now saying it's a Western plot. Well, of course it's a Western plot. They want that whole place on fire. They want to put radicals in because then the globalists can invade and clean out the radicals in each country and fully take it over. And then roll in with the sterilants, the vaccines, the fluoride, the water, the GMO crops like they've done in Iraq. And give them the same death they're giving us. They want a captured group where they can brainwash them with Western media. BBC and the U.S. government just merged as a way to launch propaganda internationally. They were already merged. Google, the, the head of Google now, they're saying is going to be the head of the Commerce Department. It's all government. You read SPP, North American Union, internal documents that, that Judicial Watch student got four years ago. At those meetings, the Fortune 100 order the presidents and the St Secretary of States and the heads of the Energy and Commerce Departments of every major nation. They tell them, do this, and they ratify it. They take direct orders. The liberals are like, good, tax the corporations and give it to the people. That just goes to the government and goes to the offshore corporations. These corporations are government. They are the government. The illegitimate, stinking corporate government. 200 years ago, the British East India Company was a private government running India and, and countless other possessions across the Pacific. It's the British East India, Dutch East India Company model. Okay, that's what globalism is. That's what the New World Order is. Here it is. Wave of unrest shakes Syria. Crowds torch party HQ. Definitely special force led, just like it was a month ago in Libya. Are we going to now have our government tell us, our corporate government, we've got to invade you notice the ceremonial Congress wasn't even involved in this. The corporate UN set up by the Rockefellers ordered it last Thursday. It happened in 48 hours. Will the corporate UN, prancing around posing as liberals, running genocide, uh, will they now call for an invasion of Syria? What about Bahrain? CNBC. I know good old boys are like, good, kill them. Uh, Bahrain's our allies, Dumbo. Bahrain King says forces have foiled foreign plot. It's all coming up. last few years that the globalist stratagem was that as they build towards the world meltdown of financial markets by design and the public birth of private corporate world government issuing the new global currency the SDR what have we broken down that they would do that what did Webster Tarpley who I want to get on in the next few days guys go ahead in fact even in the last hour to even get Tarpley I meant to tell you what did Tarpley say the Brzezinski model was he's written countless white papers books he's told us what he would do he's running foreign affairs for Obama for behind the scenes destabilization wars breaking countries up financing rebels and then when the rebels fail you move in behind them in the name of dealing with a humanitarian crisis we have called this a hundred percent what did I say a few weeks ago that they would attack Gaddafi that that was coming and then they would stage terror attacks and say that Gaddafi had done it as a pretext to launch a full bore ground invasion of the entire Middle East, every, quote, enemy, rogue nation, but also go after the globalist big enemy, the Western population, instead of their milk cows, that they're bleeding dry. And now the New York Times says USI's Gaddafi terror response, U.S. intelligence agencies are watching for signs that desperate Colonel Muammar Gaddafi, under attack from a coalition air assault, could resort to acts of terrorism against Western targets. See how perfect this is? And then if he fights back, it's called terror. Or if he, even if he doesn't, they'll stage something. They, the globalists for years, at least five they admit, have been trying to get the Iranians by attacking them internally through terror groups to respond. This is very sinister. U.S. officials are keeping an eye on that possibility, one U.S. official said. Colonel Gaddafi has... Extensive stockpiles of mustard gas, high explosive at his disposal that can be used in attacks against targets in Europe or against his own people. He has also a documented history of orchestrating the strikes against civilians and other world leaders. All right, now, here's the most important point uh, that people need to be made aware of. What is the Western ally Bahrain saying? 
that just defeated with Saudi Arabian troops a massive uprisings nationwide, many of them violent. Bahrain King says forces have foiled foreign plot. Oh, who do you think was behind it? Bahrain's king, Hamed bin Isil al Khalifa, said a foreign plot against his kingdom had been foiled and thanked troops brought in from neighboring countries to help end increasing unrest after weeks of protest. And it, but, but again, when he shoots peaceful protesters, it's loving and good in our media. At least for now. Will they call for an invasion of Bahrain? They didn't call for an invasion of China after Tiananmen Square or the ongoing stuff in the last 20 years. The king told forces that such a plot, that if such a plot had succeeded in one Gulf country, it could spill into neighboring states. Well, of course, that's the plan. The ferocity of the crackdown last week by Iranian forces, aided by the entrance of troops from the Sunni-ruled Gulf countries, stunned Bahrain's majority Shiites, the main force of protest, and angered the region's non-Arab Shiite power, Iran. So they're claiming, they're trying to imply Iran's the power. Iran, which supports Shiite groups in Iraq and Lebanon, has complained to the United Nations and asked neighbors to join in urging Saudi Arabia to withdraw forces from Bahrain. Now, what's going on uh, to the west of there in Syria, north of Israel? Wave of unrest shakes Syria. Crowds torch headquarters. Crowds set fire to headquarters of the ruling Ba'ath Party in Syria and city of uh, Dara on Sunday. Residents said as a wave of unrest in the Arab world shook even one of the most authoritarian states, the demonstrators, also set ablaze the main court complex and two phone company branches. Uh, yeah, they knew exactly what to hit, Special Force commanded. One of the firms is owned by the president, uh, Assad's cousin. They burned the symbols of oppression and corruption, an activist said. The banks nearby were torched. So you've got all these dictatorships run by independent dictators or run by Western-backed dictators. And when the Western-backed dictators kill people and shoot them, it's loving, good, helpful, uh, pro-America. But, but when it's Libya or when it is uh, Syria, it's horrible and we've got to invade. And when I say we... Again, that's my own brainwashing from the globalist. It's not our government. It's not our military. Get that through your heads as we go uh, bankrupt. And remember all those Obama memos, all those White House advisors saying we need a new 9-11. We need a new Oklahoma City to blame on domestic groups and a 9-11 to blame on foreign groups to keep the wars going and to make Obama's approval rating go up. We need these events. Remember the Gifford shooting. Within hours, they were blaming it on talk radio. Ron Paul, Alex Jones, Rush Limbaugh, Sarah Palin. As the Internet kill switch goes into place, all of this happening now, all of this unfolding, with British and other Western Special Forces on the ground, marking and lazing targets of the ongoing bombardment, with Gaddafi handing out over a million weapons to over a million citizens, preparing for the ground assault. And the globalists are happy to just split off the eastern part of the country, encircle Gaddafi, and then launch more guerrilla attacks over the years. But they may actually stage a terror attack. Remember in the few months before 9-11, even the uh, Time Magazine and Newsweek reported on this, the week after 9-11, oh, 44,000 U.S. troops, 18,000 British troops, several aircraft carrier groups, the, the aircraft uh, at, at land bases as well, all got ready, and Bush signed the order to attack Afghanistan on September 10th. In fact, guys, search the term Bush signed order to attack Afghanistan on September 10th. The first link will be Newsweek. I want to put that on screen for folks from 2001. They won't believe it unless they see it. A lot of them won't even search it. They'll just won't believe it. So you got all the troops already built up in the name of dealing with Egypt. You've got the amphibious ships that just arrived this week, dispatched three weeks ago. The amphibious Marine Corps ships, these big uh, stub aircraft carriers, sitting there waiting to disgorge Marines. Uh, you've got Illinois National Guard being dispatched to the region. Headline, Illinois Guard heads to Libya. An Air National Guard unit out of Illinois is heading to Libya to help fight against Colonel Gaddafi. I am proud of the National Guard. That means U.S. aircraft in the air launching bombing attacks. I am proud the National Guard is able to play a part in curbing 
the, atroci the, the atrocious violence against li Libyan civilians by their own government, said Major General William Inrent, uh, the adjunct general of the Illinois National Guard, in a statement. Oh, really? Uh, is a foreign government going to invade the U.S.? Headline, U.S. Army kill team. It's turned out that was lies about Gaddafi shooting innocent civilians that weren't, weren't attacking, not defending the guy. I'm just, it's a fact. It turns out he didn't run to uh, Venezuela. He didn't run to um, Zimbabwe. It's just all lies. U.S. Army killed team in Afghanistan posed for photos of murdered civilians, including children. Commanders braced for backlash of anti-U.S. sentiment that could be more damaging than Abu Ghraib scandal. Commanders in Afghanistan are bracing themselves, and they've now released the photos. We'll put it back on screen. Looks like about a 12-year-old in civilian clothes, dead, with a U.S. troop feeling really manly right now. I mean, he shot him, and it's fun. Senior officials at NATO's International Security Assistance Force in Kabul have compared the pictures published by German Newsweek leader Spiegel to the images of U.S. soldiers abusing prisoners in Abu Ghraib in Iraq, which sparked waves of anti-U.S. protest. Notice it was time to pull out of Afghanistan. It's like it was time to pull out of Iraq in 2005. And so they release the Abu Ghraib photos. They want the rebellion. British SAS was caught in 2006. London Guardian, Associated Press, dressed up like Sunnis, shooting and killing Shiites in Basra, Iraq. This is a multi-trillion dollar operation for the bankers. They create the entire war. They fund the terrorists. They fund the criminal groups. They fund attacks that's come out on our own troops by mercenaries. you got to have some kill numbers. They know the troops are going to have a delayed death from the DU. This is full-spectrum war against everyone by the globalist, playing different tribes, different religions, different groups off against each other. Full-spectrum dominance. Get into the mind of the globalist. Understand, oh, but the armies apologize, so it's okay. Does that mean Qaddafi can apologize and the invasion won't have to happen? And remember, they lied and said there was no Western involvement in the rebels a month ago in Libya. Now it turns out the whole thing was run by the West, just like the whole thing against Mubarak was run, because it turns out he didn't want to go along with the Libya attack, the Iran attack. Are you guys calling Tarpley? He's good for 130. Excellent job. I forgot to tell you I want him. Good job. Tarpley absolutely called this in 2000 and. Eight during the campaign, he said, Obama is going to win. This is exactly what's going to happen. They're going to fund destabilization groups in all the Arab countries. And then there's going to be a giant destabilization and a huge war that could lead to World War III. And exactly what he said happened. We even, in Obama deception, show the maps and how they would do it. Of course, Tarpley, we could give him credit, but, and he does deserve it because he actually read what, what Brzezinski Brzezinsk said, what the Israelis in the 80s talked about, a plan to destabilize all the Arab countries, including allies, and overthrow them, and then have a war with the al-Qaeda they put in. That'll make some money for the defense contractors. These guys, I remember two, three years ago, it was coming out about Blackwater murdering people for fun and the drugs and the armaments and the reports of staging events as a pretext for the West to stay in those countries. People would send me emails or I even ran into family who were like, Blackwater's pro-America doing what the army can't do. Family I have in the military. And now it turns out all of it was true. And they've moved to the Middle East where they can't be extradited. And I remember three months ago, all these reports about why is Blackwater moving into North Africa? Why have they signed a deal with a mercenary group even bigger than them out of South Africa that's so secret, it, details aren't even known about them? Super hardcore mercs. Because they knew about the new bonus time coming. You better believe there's merc forces, not just SAS and, and other regular uh, military out of England, are all over Libya right now. And they got their rear end handed to them by Muammar Gaddafi, who's actually a military guy. He's a bold scrapper, folks. 
He took over when he was 20-something years old. What was he, 27 when he took over? Overthrew a monarchy? And he says, I'm going down. He says, I'm going down. I will die here. And he said, it's lies. I haven't left Tripoli. Remember a month ago and then two weeks ago? And then they always keep lying to kind of bolster the rebel forces. Gaddafi's fled. We've won to try to create a mass panic. And he said, I haven't left. I will die here. Bring it. Bring it. Well, the globalists have brought it. And this is what he said to Obama in a statement today. To my dear Obama, our son, saying he's a son of Africa, says Gaddafi, defending attacks on rebels. No, he's a son of J.P. Morgan, Chase, Goldman Sachs. Gotta get that straight, Gaddafi. To my dear son, our son, says Gaddafi, defending attacks on rebels. He went on to say, if you were having uprisings against your capital, what would you do in America? Well, we know. Even if they were legitimate, they would mow down citizens, and it would be hailed as a wonderful act. The feds would then set off truck bombs outside public schools to target children and blame the groups they'd mowed down for bombing the children. That's an easy equation. If the globalists have to mow Americans down, they will simultaneously de detonate weapons, blaming it on domestic groups. They will then go around and arrest all the patriot leaders, including myself. D don't think that's not what they're moving towards. If things get so bad in the Depression that you uprise, they will commit atrocities and blame it on you. It is in the Army handbook leaked by WikiLeaks. Three years ago, the Army does not deny it's theirs. They admit it's theirs, teaching Army captains and above who are in special ops, black ops, how to stage terror. Here's your canteen. Here's your M16. Here's your field manual. Now, here's how you uh, stage terror attacks. It seems to work best when you kill some kids. You're a real man, aren't you? That's why you've moved up to this level. Don't worry, we're going to have you shipping narcotics into America after a few tours doing this overseas. They test them. And they create... Com and, and, and again, folks, I've had family, I'm just going to leave it at that, who uh, their favorite place to recruit is the Army, who was a low-level Army officer, recruited by the CIA when he got out of the Army. And they said, first, for your training, we're going to send you to Chicago. And the stuff was so horrible that this family member told my dad, I know the family member, they don't tell me this stuff, that he just said he refused to do it after a month. But it was narcotics trafficking, things even worse. Who do you think pulls the hits in America? The Army, folks. They've got hundreds of thousands of former military service people. They've got hit men in every neighborhood. Okay? The U.S. Army is only the induction center for the black op army of the New World Order. I hope you realize that. Their favorite place to recruit is Texas. They love Texans. I've got that from multiple sources. And uh, they love farm boys. And they get them all over the Midwest, folks. And they give them power, money, you name it. And it is horrible, ladies and gentlemen. This country has been... What did... Smedley Butler, Marine Corps Major General, set to be the Marine Corps Commandant, two-time Congressional Medal of Honor winner, who overthrew more than 10 third world nations. He was approached by Prescott Bush. He was approached by the Harrimans. He played along for two months with the plan for him to recruit 500,000 men. They already had over 100,000 former military. Police chiefs on the payroll, even at the time, liquor running, narcotics running. And he was the lead 500,000 men in a fascist coup over America to link up with Hitler. He played along long enough to find out the full plot. He was to be the new dictator, the president. Just like George Washington after his tour in office, they said, please come back, do another term. And he said, no, I've done two. I'm going back to my farm. And they came to Butler and they said, you're going to be president. You're a war hero. You're totally loved. You ready for this, sir? He said, yeah, I'm ready. Now, they, they've already done it. You need to understand that. They run both houses. They run almost all the Congress. Ron Paul has said here on the air that he is in danger. We brought that up. They're raping and robbing everything. I mean, folks, in my own family, I know multiple people recruited who then got out and did not go along with it. Okay. Ladies and gentlemen, this is everywhere. This is ubiquitous. They've got over 500,000 in InfraGuard. 
They've got the clergy response teams recruited by this. This is an army of pure evil. What do you think 11 years ago, now almost 12, that Prudential and others could meet with the VA and sign a secret deal to take all benefits from World War II vets through current vets that they have them pay into for death insurance? Why do you think you're getting the news that they've stolen most of the money out of the private and public pension funds? Because they don't care. Because they've got Homeland Security out recruiting doctors, lawyers, school teachers, pastors to spy on their neighbors, to spy on their students. Because they've recruited hundreds of thousands of former military personnel, predominantly U.S. Army, to form a giant murderous mafia who they pay out of the $500 billion in narcotics money each year. America is a giant prison. We've got more prisons than any other country in the world. We're a giant police state. All that's left is free speech, that vestige, and our Second Amendment that the forefathers, the forefathers put in place as an emergency system against tyranny. All we've got is our courage. The globalists don't care about those military men that they've got as attack dogs. They bathe them in DU and deadly vaccines. They don't care about their own children. This whole new war is a good smokescreen from Fukushima and the ongoing radiation being belched into the air. 20 plus times safe radiation levels reported in the food. What, 26 times in Japan? Radioactive iodine in the water. Not hearing about that now. More of that coming up in the next hour. And this precedent for the U.N. to pass a resolution on Thursday night, and within 48 hours, the bombing had begun, with ground forces there lazing the targets, telling you it was a natural uprising by the Libyans. You think it's a real uprising targeting key installations in Syria right now? I, the Syrians are corrupt. Gaddafi's corrupt, but do we have the big corrupt bankers that run us launch wars against them so they can get their oil and get beachheads to take over the rest of the Middle East that we've all got to pay for? Wrangle is calling again for a national draft. That little crook. I'm speechless at this point. But you've got Gaddafi saying, to my dear... Obama, our son, says Gaddafi defending attacks on rebels, calling Obama, our son, Leader Muammar Gaddafi, sent a message to U.S. President defending his decision to attack the rebels, fighting to overthrow him. Gaddafi, 68, also wrote a letter to French and British leaders in the U.N. General Assembly saying the Security Council resolution was void and violated the U.N. Charter, warning them that they would regret any intervention. That's exactly what they want, Gaddafi, is for you to launch weapons across the Mediterranean into Europe so they can invade you. Libya is not for you. Libya is for Libyans, he said. No, it's for the New World Order. Details of Gaddafi's letters were released by the Libyan government spokesman at a news conference in Tripoli. Defending his decision to attack rebels, Gaddafi told Obama, Al-Qaeda is an armed organization passing through Algeria. Mali, what would you do if you found them controlling American cities with power and weapons? Well, Gaddafi, you know they're running them. What would you do? So I can follow your example. Trying to strike a personal note, Gaddafi prefaced his letter saying to our son, His Excellency Mr. Barack Hussein Obama, I have said to you before, who they've met and hugged, that even if Libya and the United States of America enter into war, God forbid, you always remain our son. Your picture will not be changed. In his letter to Nicholas Sarkozy, David Cameron, and Ban Ki-moon, Gaddafi said, Libya is not yours. Libya is for Libyans. The Security Council of the Revolution is void because it is not, according to the Charter, to interfere with internal affairs of a country. This new UN precedent is uh, Western-backed rebels with special forces commanding them, predominantly out of England, attack a country and the country fights back against rebels, now a bombardment, a no-fly zone, and an invasion is reportedly triggered. And that precedent is now being set. Now remember, here's the most important thing I've said today. I'm going to say it again. The globalists 
need a war to create artificial patriotic fervor to go along with the debasing of the currency, the robbing of the pension funds, economic martial law being declared in Michigan and other states, regular laws being phased out and suspended. They won't call it martial law. Internet kill switches, open calls for censorship uh, of the Internet. All of this now being done by design. They need a war. What has Tarpley told you? What have I told you? What has Dr. Roberts told you? What has every other serious political mind told you? The next playbook is war all over the world. And airstrikes going in to back up the rebels. Attempted assassination of Gaddafi, which violates federal and international law. The resolution does not say it's a death penalty. You know, I guess they killed Slovan Milosevic, never let him have a trial after they had al-Qaeda attack the Serbs. And al-Qaeda's there doing the same thing, and he doesn't get a judge, jury, executioner. There can't be a trial where the facts come out. Not that Gaddafi's good, but everything that's been said is a lie. So they want to kill him with cruise missiles and 2,000-pound bombs, and they're trying right now. They've got drones up there. They've got on-the-ground spies. They're trying to target him. There's big secret bounties on his head, you better believe, and they're out to kill him. So they can roll in, put al-Qaeda in charge, and then turn around and slap them down. And that'll give the bomb makers a place to drop bombs. Now, I want to continue with a total recap of all the latest developments in the Middle East and North Africa on the other side, but I also want to take some of your phone calls on these issues. The toll-free number to join us is 800-259-9231. 800-259-9231. Ninety-two thirty-one, And while we're busy, focused on this. While we're busy covering these issues. While we're busy, focused on what's happening in North Africa. The radiation cloud from the explosions last week is headed this way. The headlines are intensifying radiation all over Japan. And that's basically on the back burner now. And our media, the controlled corporate media, is saying, oh... Increased radiation levels are no big deal because it's been diluted across the Pacific. So you do a general background radiation meter, it's only up a little because it's the little particles individually. Unless one of those sticks on the front of a Geiger counter, it doesn't go up much. But if you breathe it and then it sits there in your lungs, that's what all the nuclear physicists and medical doctors and radiologist experts have explained. That's why it's dangerous. That's why Chernobyl was dangerous. And that's why the cancers are going up. One of the cocktail of reasons uh, that all of that uh, is now happening as well. But I do want to take your phone calls. Will you guys launch my messenger to Minnesota so I can get those? Thank you. 1-800-259-9231. I have been exhausted lately because I've been thinking about this so intensely and realizing that you notice just everything is going crazy now. The globalists have flipped a switch and the haywire has begun because they're transitioning into this global government model, this private corporate global governance model. And it's on. And the globalists are moving against all of our liberties, all of our freedoms in a big way. A federal jury is convicted. The Liberty Dollar creator, totally legal what he did according to every law. Ron Paul said that. Uh, you've got... North Carolina, Montana moving for their own gold and silver currencies. Will the feds arrest governors? This is a global mafia we're under. They've got to be stopped. Dr. Webster Tarpley is going to be joining us last 30 minutes of the next hour. Coming up in about 25 minutes, we've got Wayne Madsen, formerly with the NSA. Give us his take on what's happening internationally. I want to recap and get into some of the latest news uh, in North Africa with Libya and the new war that's been launched there. Then I want to get into the latest on the Fukushima, Japan ongoing meltdown. Then I'm going to your phone calls, Jack in Japan, Mark, Marshall, Tim, Ben, and others that are patiently holding. Uh, here's the most important information. Uh, even the London Telegraph reporting it is Al-Qaeda that's been launching the attacks. SAS backed, British Special Forces backed the entire month-long attack. They got defeated, uh, so now the West is publicly bombarding and trying to assassinate Gaddafi that violates international law. I know at a bestial level, people feel powerful, but this is not our military. This is the global government's military uh, doing this. 
Here's the Prison Planet article breaking it down. U.S. government backs Libyan al-Qaeda while hyping terror attacks inside the United States. And that's really the biggest news is they're saying, look for Gaddafi to strike. It would serve the globalists to stage terror attacks now. I'd say we're in prime danger of it happening. Not 100%. They're gauging right now to stage terror attacks, then blame it on Gaddafi, use that as a pretext to launch the amphibious invasion with the Marine Corps and NATO UN-backed uh, invasion ships right off the coast uh, of Tripoli right now, and they get to then crack down on the American people and take more liberties. Uh, in Yemen, in Bahrain, uh, those are Western allies, uh, they're having massive uh, riots and the military is cracking down on people. Uh, in the globalist enemy state, rogue state of Syria, uh, the, quote, protesters are hitting key government buildings and telecommunications infrastructure. And are we going to hear a new U.N. resolution that an invasion has to now happen uh, in Syria because they're abusing their population? They're abusing the globalist special forces that are attacking and murdering people? Meanwhile, U.S. Army kill team in Afghanistan poses for photos of murdered civilians, including children. This is the type of stuff that's going on. This is the type of stuff that's unfolding. Uh, will we be invaded? Undoubtedly someday when the Southwest gets lit on fire by the illegal alien Ford Foundation controlled groups. Yeah, there's been open talk about using a U.N. stabilization force and using Mexican and Canadian troops in the U.S. during civil insurrection. That's now mainstream news. Ottawa Citizen, Associated Press. They've been planning this a long time. NLE 09, NLE 010. FEMA drilling with 14 foreign nations to take over the U.S. Don't think it won't happen here. Don't think this global government precedent isn't being set with the U.N. last Thursday ordering the West to start the no-fly, which is doublespeak for bombardment and physical ground invasion. This is unbelievable what's going on, but it's part of the stratagem of tension predicted by myself and other experts here years ago. This is the Brzezigny, Brzezinski, David Rockefeller global stratagem of destabilization. There is so much to break down here. France is collapsing, France 24 reports. That's what Le Pen is saying. We're gonna be going over that as well. Let me shift gears into Fukushima. Here are the headlines. Infowars.com. Japan's nuclear crisis debacle and the depopulation agenda. Fox News is still rolling footage of the plant before it blew up to make you think it's undamaged. Pounding rain fuels radiation fears in Japan. Driving rain on Monday disrupted rescue efforts in Japan and compounded the misery of disaster. Survivors now facing radioactive fallout from the smoldering wreck of the nuclear plant. You mean plants. Uh, they're now picking up up to 26 times health, uh, uh, regular doses of radiation in spinach, other food, and water supplies. As far away as Tokyo, 150 miles away. Meanwhile, you've got days and days, over a week of radiation, blowing our way with no actual readings coming out. The federal government and UN saying, well, they're above normal, but that's, that's not bad for you. With, again, the background radiation is one thing. It's the individualized fallout particles themselves higher that they're picking up from a distance with the Geiger counters. You breathe that, you get it on your fingers, you rub your eyes. One particle is enough to accelerate your cancer risk massively. But we're seeing the cover-up we saw with Chernobyl, Three Mile Island. Hey, it's no big deal. In fact, Ann Coulter, Fox News, we actually have these clips. If you think I'm joking, just type in, Ann Coulter says radiation good. In fact, folks won't believe that. Pull up the clip. It's from an article uh, Friday. Uh, go to YouTube. Ann Coulter says radiation good for it. It's a short clip. We'll play it later as soon as you find it. Pounding rain fuels radiation fears in Japan. Workers flee Japan nuclear plant as smoke rises yet again today. You're, you're being told by the media, predominantly on the big nightly news, oh, it's cleaned up, problems getting better. They may have to Chernobyl it and actually cover it with sand and concrete. Yeah, it's smoking and still on fire, but don't worry about it. 600,000 plus spent fuel rods, six reactors, four of them have blown up. Everything's fine. Workers flee Japan 
nuclear plant, the smoke rises, radiation rising. Gray smoke rose from two nuclear units today, temporarily stalling critical work to reconnect power lines and restore cooling systems that's to stabilize Japan's radiation leaking nuclear complex. They dump seawater into all of it that gums up the systems. There's been huge explosions. Don't count on that power getting it back on. I'm just being a realist. Workers are racing to bring the nuclear plant under control, but the process is proceeding in fits and starts, stalled by incidents like the smoke and by the need to work methodically to make sure wiring, pumps, and other machinery can be safely switched on. Our crisis is still going on. Our crisis is with the nuclear plants. We're doing everything we can to bring this to an end. Governor Yuhi Sato of Fukushima Prefecture, where the plant is located, told the more than 1,000 people moved away from the plant into a gymnasium. Don't give up. We know you are suffering. Please get us out of here, yelled a 63-year-old Japanese truck driver. What caused the smoke to bellow first from Unit 3 at Fukushima Daiichi plant and later from Unit 2 is still under investigation? Yeah, right. They admit partial meltdowns of four of the plants, explosions, two reactor cores breached, uh, 600,000 plus fuel rods blown hither and there. Uh, nuclear safety agency officials said still in the days since March 11th earthquake, the tsunami racked the plant's cooling system. Both reactors have overheated and seen explosions. Four of them have. Workers were evacuated from the area to buildings nearby. The radiation levels rem uh, remain steady, the officials said. That's a nice way to spin higher levels. They're steady. Problems set off by disasters have ranged. The head of the plant said last Friday that it, it's enough to kill you. Started crying. He couldn't be part of the cover-up anymore. Problems set off from the disasters have ravaged and raged far beyond the devastated northeast coast and wreaked nuclear plant. Handing the government what has been called Japan's worst crisis since World War II. Man, I'm exhausted, folks. I know you are, too. Imagine the people in there trying to secure those plants so they don't have total meltdown, which may have even happened. We don't know the truth. Cover-ups are admitted. We just don't know the extent. Imagine them risking their lives just watching this, just reporting on it is exhausting. <sighs> U.S. makes potassium iodine available in Japan. Now we know why the government's been hoarding it because they're shipping it to Japan. Makes sense. Taiwan Japanese restaurant offers radiation checks for diners. Japanese government admits potassium iodine pills should have been distributed earlier. It's always something good to have in your medicine cabinet. Japan radiation release long-term problem, France's ASN says. The release of radiation from the crippled Fukushima Daiichi nuclear power plant will be a problem for Japan to years to come. What about us directly in the line of uh, the fallout? According to French nuclear watchdog, we are at the beginning of the post-accident phase. Andre Claude Lacoste, head of the Paris-based nuclear watchdog group, said at a press conference in Paris today, Japan will have to deal with the consequence of this accident. Japan will have to deal with the consequences of this accident for decades. Radioactive contamination, which has been significant, could spread as far as 100 kilometers around the site. He said, or already has, said Japan's chief cabinet secretary. And they're saying radiation levels, 26 times normal levels, found on spinach and in the water and other food, is safe. Tell that to folks who get cancer. Jack in Japan, what can you tell us, Jack? Well, basically, Alex, the first thing I've got to let you know, I'm not sure, I haven't, uh, I haven't heard you report on the set. If you have in today's uh, uh, episode, I apologize. But um, the first thing I want to let you know is that in our drinking water, we've now got dangerous levels of radioactive iodine-131 and cesium-137 um, in the prefectures of Fukushima, Ibaragi, Guma, Tochigi, and in diminished levels, but even in Tokyo. Uh, yes, sir. We did report that last night and today, but I should have reported it more. In fact, we'll put on screen, just search the term radioactive iodine found in Japanese drinking water and food, as well as some other isotopes uh, in one prefecture, 26 times safe levels. That's correct. That's correct. And, um, and I got a message for Ann Coulter. If she thinks radiation is so nutritious, then uh, I'll either pay for her airfare to come out here or I'll brew up a pot of coffee with my cesium-137 water and I'll, I'll ship it to her. I well, that's a good point to make. Alex. 
We should publicly challenge Ann Coulter. In fact, I'm publicly saying that I will pay for her a first-class ticket to Tokyo uh, from wherever she lives. In fact, I want to get Watson or Aaron Dykes or, or Kurt. I want to put the challenge out at Infowars.com to Ann Coulter right now that I will pay for her a first-class ticket, room and board, to go to Fukushima, and I'm sure they'll let her uh, tour the reactors themselves. If it's so good, I think she should go drink water directly from the reactor course. Oh, and Alex, I will drive her up there personally. I was disgusted when I heard those comments. I swear to goodness. Um, and one more note of concern. You are correct. The work at the reactors was suspended at uh, 3.55 local time today uh, due to fires um, in the reactor cores. And one of the reactors is the number three reactor that's the dangerous MOX reactor. Um, and according to my research, we've got something on the order of 1,760 tons of um, uh, you know, live and spent fuel on site. And you compare that to, to uh, Chernobyl with 180 tons, and um, this, this thing is pretty serious, if you ask me. Tell you what, stay there, Jack. Your intel is absolutely on target from all our research. I want to get more from you on the other side than Mark Marshall, Tim, Ben, and others. I'm Alex Jones. This is the Genesis Network, GCNlive.com. There is no doubt that there's an ongoing cover-up about the disaster in Japan. They're using the new war as a distraction. We're putting our money where Ann Coulter's mouth is. Kurt Nemo at InfoWars.com right now is writing the story, headline, We Will Pay Ann Coulter to Go to Fukushima Radiation Zone. And we're going to state it for, okay, lady, you say radiation's good for you and there's a growing body of evidence. They target certain cancers with it because it kills cells. Not the entire body being hit by it. Every major study shows it increases cancer. No one denies that. But this is their brazen propaganda. Not only is the radiation hitting the U.S. not bad, it's good for you. Yes, it's very good for the atomic soldiers. It was very good for the folks at Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It's very good for plant workers that have inhaled uranium and plutonium. Even the folks that mine it when it's not enriched die from it. Incredible. Uh, Jack, uh, I mean, talk about brazen propaganda. That's certainly it. Jack from Japan. Anything else you'd like to add? Well, basically, you know, I had a meeting with several people today, and basically everybody knows that the government is lying to us, and everyone is getting very, very angry, um, not just at the government, but at the Tokyo Power and Electric Company. I mean, everybody knows um, just, the, just the basic design of these reactors. I mean, why would you put something that's dangerous, fissile, and can explode on top of something that can explode. In other words, I'm sure as your listeners know, they've, they've got the uh, spent fuel rods and the roofs of these reactors. And so it's like, why would I store my gasoline on top of my, you know, on top of my uh, pile of, uh, you know, fireworks? No, no, on top and of your stove. Exactly, exactly. And, and the people are really starting to get wise quick. And um, some of the good news is some of the local level government people, as you mentioned, the mayor of the one particular town and the governor of Fukushima, um, they're getting wise quick too. And I'll tell you what, people are getting really angry. And I am definitely going down to Tokyo Power and Electric um, in Tokyo to, uh, to talk to some managers and I'm going to film it and uh, do a little We Are Change style guerrilla filming uh, when I get the chance. One more thing I want to add, Alex, get this, they haven't even closed the schools. Okay, the kids are walking 20, 30 minutes going to schools. They're playing outdoors for an hour during recess, especially right about now because the school year changes over in uh, April here in Japan. Uh, it's, it's uh, what is it, uh, September in America. Well, no, I saw that in the people. news. That's just like 9-11 with all the asbestos dust. They've got to say don't wear masks. They've got to keep the schools open or they'd have to admit that there was a problem. Exactly, exactly. And so it's just everything's fine. Just go back to sleep. No problem. Send your kids to school. Meanwhile, it's raining and they're playing outside. And we've still got here where I'm at, the radiation has uh, gone down a little bit. It's only about six times the normal amount of uh, radio radiation. But but in other parts, a little bit closer, um, it's it's really bad, like in Ibaraki Prefecture and in uh, Tochigi Prefecture and uh, Fukushima Prefecture. And, and again, that's an, that's an air reading, not the spinach, not the water where it's dissipated and, and, and uh, uh, basically condensed and had a chance to bioaccumulate. Exactly. And you better believe when they started taking the spinach off the shelves, a lot of the people that I know, including just, you know, little grandmas and grandpas who don't even really uh, follow, you know, the news too well, they really started to wake up when they saw this. You know, one, one other thing, Alex, I wanted to just share with, uh, with, you, with your listeners is just you've mentioned it before in your show, and I just want to say it's true here, you know, spread this information out because 
people might chuckle at you right now. They not, might not believe you right now. But when this stuff starts coming true later, they are really going to start listening to you. And believe me, the people who you know listened to me but didn't buy any storable food or water, um, they are they, th that's the group of people who came to me today to have a meeting at my house to talk to me about what we should do about this situation because they they understood that you know this this information is real and um, and if you do do things and if you do get prepared if you do look towards the future um, and not necessarily trust every single thing that comes out of the government mouthpiece and rather trust things that come out of the alternative media um, you can be better prepared when a situation like this comes down the pike very well said Jack from Japan anything else you'd like to add Oh, just that, just that, let me tell you, um, people really are living on pins and needles here. I mean, I've got, I, I, I used to live in Fukushima, Alex. I, 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 just, I look at the pictures of, uh, of like Iwaki in Fukushima, and I recognize the streets, and now they're just torn to shreds. Um, another place that has been really damaged are the graveyards, and graveyards are really important because it's like your whole family history goes into one single grave. All right. For, and so for hundreds of years, for one single grave, it's all your grandparents and your great grandparents and everything. And now it's just smashed. Um, and so people are just really pretty much just living day to day. And it's really it's, it's a sad situation. And just people, people out there, listeners and everybody, just pray for Japan. Um, just pray for us if you can. And I, I appreciate it. We will, Jack. Thank you so much for the call. Words cannot describe how hypocritical and ridiculous it is that the West, the big banks, the military-industrial complex that runs our country, claimed a month ago that they didn't have any special forces in Libya and that they weren't involved in the destabilization program. Now it's been admitted for at least three weeks that British special forces and other mercenaries not just regular government SAS, special air services, are in the country leading the groups, and that, yes, it is, quote, the CIA Al-Qaeda Brigade out of Saudi Arabia and Egypt. And it's in the London Telegraph, CNN. They go, oh, is it wrong that Al-Qaeda's hailing this and that Al-Qaeda's doing it? Maybe not. Al-Qaeda was good when they attacked Serbia as a pretext to start that war. Oh, look, the Serbs are being mean to the Al-Qaeda We've got to invade and hand it over to Albania, basically. Oh, they used al-Qaeda to attack and start the war with the Russians. Is that saying the Russians were little angels? No. The point is, the globalists are starting these wars. And now they've tried to assassinate Gaddafi in the last 24 hours with cruise missiles and bombs. That's confirmed by BBC and others. That's a violation of international law. No judge, no jury, no execution. The no-fly zone doesn't say they can try to kill Gaddafi. Notice uh, Hillary and others have said you will accept a humanitarian force, that's a ground force, or we will completely destroy you. So this is a new war and it's part of this larger strategy of tension. And we have the UN with its ruling, with its resolution Thursday, ordering this launch and calling it a no-fly zone. But in the body is the language for aerial bombardments that are now on and physical invasion with two Marine Corps giant amphibious invasion ships. They're basically Marine Corps um, ground invasion command carriers. They're like stub carriers. They're about a little 60% the size of a regular uh, a carrier the Navy has. You can pull them up if you want online. Uh, their names are in the news. They're similar to the Coronado, but it's not there. That was the Coronado I watched do a drill of landing in the Bay Area of Oakland and San Francisco and disgorging U.S. Marines and foreign troops with role players screaming, I'm an American, please know not the camp, don't take my gun. That was a big wake-up call for me in 1999. It's in my film, Police Day 2000, by the way. Now, Wayne Madsen is a Washington, D.C.-based investigative journalist, author, and syndicated columnist. He's written for The Village Voice, The Progressive, Counterpunch, Online Journal, Corp Watch, uh, Multinational Monitor, News Insider, These Times, The American Conservative, 
His columns have appeared in the Miami Herald, Houston Chronicle, Philadelphia Inquirer, Columbus Dispatch, Sacramento Bee, the Atlanta Journal-Constitution, among others. He's been all over international television, formerly with the NSA, before that in submarine uh, warfare, anti-submarine warfare. Also worked for RCA Corporation. He reports from Capitol Hill and the National Press Club. WayneMadsonReport.com is the website. We're linked to it on Infowars.com. Uh, Wayne, looking at this, it's quite a precedent. We now have clearly special forces backed, hitting key targets, government buildings, telecommunications in Syria. Uh, the new precedent set that if sovereign governments repel Western-backed rebels, that there will then be a Western invasion. Is this the, the, the Zbigniew Brzezinski destabilization program that he wrote about three years ago? Well, I, I'll tell you, I think what, what we're seeing playing out in Libya, now also probably in Yemen, is the co-option of these Arab revolts by the CIA and their uh, allied intelligence and special uh, forces uh, units uh, in these NATO countries. Um, <clears throat> no one would doubt that what happened in Tunisia probably surprised a lot of people. That's then spread to Egypt, and it was clear that uh, it was bound to uh, spill over the uh, Egyptian and Tunisian border into Libya. It spread into Algeria, Morocco, uh, Saudi Arabia, uh, Bahrain, and other countries. But now what we're seeing play out is uh, NATO uh, launching this attack on Libya. Now, this is, this is a game changer. Uh, many in the uh, Libyan opposition did not want uh, U.S. Uh, and NATO um, uh, forces uh, in the country, but I think that there's probably now two uh, types of, or two forms of Libyan opposition. There are those who are Libyan nationalists who just want to see Gaddafi go, and then there's the others who have been waiting in the wings in London, in Washington, and other places waiting for this moment, and these are the groups that are probably going to want to take over with the CIA and MI6's support, uh, and what we're going to see is uh, it, Libya's uh, tremendous oil uh, deposits being the target uh, for these uh, uh, countries. <clears throat> now, that said, I think we also have to look at there's a huge split within NATO and the European Union, and uh, th we probably haven't seen a split like this in NATO since the 1956 invasion by Britain and France of Suez. And, uh, of course, President Eisenhower would not support that, and that created a major rift in NATO. Now we see Turkey and G Germany, uh, two large NATO countries after the United States, as far as military power is concerned, not supporting this effort. And the worst thing, the Italians are now involved, and that is the former colonial power that ruled uh, Libya. And I can't think of anything worse than having Italians participate in a uh, military adventure against Libya. That, that Benito probably... Mussolini uh, actually yes. uh, invaded, uh, for those that don't know, now they'll say he's a good guy, but for, for, for those that don't know, this will clearly now unify more Libyans behind Muammar Gaddafi. Right, and we have, of course, uh, Mussolini's ideological son, Silvio Berlusconi, now in, uh, in power in, in, in Italy, and of course he's facing all kinds of uh, legal problems, uh, messing around with hooker, uh, underage hookers, and uh, the guy's mafiosi from the word go. But he's looking at this, obviously, as a chance for him to gain political points. He was basically almost on his way out. And now we see Harper in Canada providing uh, military forces for this uh, invasion of Libya. And they're saying that his poll numbers are up in, in Canada. So I'm looking at people like Sarkozy and Berlusconi and Harper trying to make political points in this. And now we had Saif al-Islam Qaddafi, uh, 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 Qaddafi's son, state that Sarkozy's presidential campaign was bankrolled by Libyan money. Now that brings up the whole thing with the Clearstream uh, uh, bank accounts, uh, uh, Sarkozy being funded from uh, money outside of France. And uh, he went after uh, Dominique de Villepin, tried to put him in jail for, for slander. Uh, and now it looks like probably uh, what de Villepin and the others in the Chirac government were saying about Sarkozy was true. This guy was the first guy to run to Gaddafi and meet him in Libya. And now he's the first one to launch uh, French uh, warplanes against Libya. So we're we seeing also a lot have of the EU head Herman von Rumpy just a few months ago embracing Gaddafi. You have the British government 
uh, embracing him, uh, selling him most of his weapons. Is this an attempt to go ahead and kill Gaddafi so that he won't use all of his blackmail on them? Well, I think so. He's obviously got, uh, you know, a lot of information about uh, what's been going on behind the scenes. Uh, just like Saddam Hussein had a lot of information about some of some of these uh, leaders of these Western countries, and, uh, and and obviously the the launch of the cruise, the Tomahawk that hit his compound in Tripoli, where I, w I actually was in October of 2009. There's a, a monument there to the Reagan uh, attack against Gaddafi, where his daughter was killed in 1986. And, and uh, that's a violation of Executive Order 12333, which prohibits uh, the assassination of foreign leaders. Of course, we've violated that so many times over the years uh, with the, you know, the insane uh, and, uh, and, 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 and there's been other covert operations against other world leaders that haven't gotten as much uh, publicity uh, over the years. But um, now, now we see a group in Congress, de Democrats and Republicans, saying, look, Obama went to the U.N., he went to NATO, but he never went to Congress to get authorization for this act, uh, action. And uh, there's one Democrat, apparently, who's uh, apparently um, uh, willing to uh, put forward uh, articles of impeachment yeah. against uh, President Obama. Wayne Madsen, l let me stop you right there, because that's the big issue I've been making since last Thursday. No statements, no even resolution, much less a uh, declaration of war, which we haven't had since World War II. Now we're seeing nothing from Congress within 24 hours of the U.N. voting for a no-fly zone. It turns into a bombardment with British news reporting that SAS smash squads are on the ground in Libya to mark targets for coalition jets. Uh, the rebels arrested a bunch of SAS, as you know, two weeks ago that embarrassed everybody. Uh, clearly, they waited till the rebels uh, were backed up in a corner so that they would have to accept uh, Western intervention. Uh, what's the larger strategy in all of this? Why do you think this came together so fast? Does it play into the trillion-dollar nuke industry desperately needing a distraction from the radioactive clouds still drifting this way? Oh, wow. It hasn't been interesting the last couple of weeks with the way the news cycle has gone. First, we had a massive coverage of the Arab Revolt. Then we had the earthquake, tsunami, and the nuclear uh, disaster in Japan. And now we're back to Libya. So, uh, you know, it's, it, the, the news media, the corporate media, uh, only goes for the news of the day. And then other major uh, news events are, are not covered. And, and I think we're seeing a lot of that play out now. It's the news du jour, as I call it here in Washington. Uh, so, yeah, I think that plays a lot uh, into this a lot, that uh, the focus is, is moving away from other issues. As you said, the nuclear uh, meltdown at Fukushima uh, being, uh, being a major uh, story that's uh, not only being suppressed by the Japanese government media, TEPCO, but also I think we see a lot of the nuke industry here, the nuke lobby, uh, 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 trying to play down the uh, the, the safety yeah. effects of that. So, so I think a, a lot of the, these this this news is intertwined, uh, and 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 the, the the gatekeepers, the corporate news gatekeepers, are trying to have it their own way and how they report these uh, these breaking stories. Wayne, I want to get more into the unfolding crisis. Still having trouble getting those reactors under control. More gas explosions. More off gassing. Uh, unfolding today. Japanese still talking about a, a, a Chernobyl option of just burying the reactors. I want to get into Ann Coulter saying radiation's good for you. Uh, that's the actual headline. But before we go there, uh, why do you think Obama went with this to strengthen global governance, to strengthen the corporate state through the UN, to totally cut Congress out of the loop? What's the constellation, the cocktail? of reasons that they engaged in this naked uh, act, you know, lying and saying he'd raced to Venezuela, he'd gone to Zimbabwe, saying he'd strafed crowds. Turns out that isn't true. I mean, the point is, I'm not saying Gaddafi's a good guy, it's just that they've been lying about him, and now we have giant Marine Corps and Navy amphibious invasion carriers off the coast, uh, and the resolution, and Hillary's also said this, that if he doesn't accept a humanitarian ground force, 
that means an armed force, that there will be an invasion. So they pretty much stated the ground invasion right there. We've got Gaddafi handing out over a million firearms preparing to, uh, for guerrilla warfare. Right, and I think what this shows is that Obama is no different than his predecessor when it comes to these coalition uh, coalitions of the willing, that we saw this play out in Iraq. We saw it pl play out in Afghanistan. And, and here we see it playing out again. Um, look, uh, uh, there were no vetoes in the UN Security Council, but it, it was to establish a no-fly zone. Uh, now we even have the Arab League that supported uh, no-fly zone saying, wait a minute, we weren't talking about launching cruise missiles and killing civilians, which we have many reports now that many civilians were killed by these NATO strikes on Libya. So they parade out a couple of countries, a uh, few uh, Air Force planes from Qatar and the United Arab Emirates. Big deal. We don't see, where, where's Egypt in this whole uh, operation? Uh, so, yeah, it's, 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 Obama is a neocon. His advisors are neocons. They, he can call himself a Democrat till the cows come home. But the foreign policy of Obama is no different than the foreign policy of George W. Bush. What about He's this still... precedent? What about this precedent, Wayne? We've got limited time here. I, I, hopefully you can stay a little bit in the next hour so we can take calls. Sure. But what about the precedent being set here where any time there's an uprising in a country and if the nation crushes them in any way, then there's got to be a U.N.-ordered invasion. But then the, there's the hypocrisy of the West crushing and killing demonstrators, as has happened in England at G20 and other events. There's the specter of cops shooting people in the back. Uh, there's the specter of, of uh, the similar things. On the heels of the hypocrisy energized, the illustration energized and highlighted by U.S. Army kill team in Afghanistan posed for photos of murdered civilians, including little bloody dead children, with the, quote, kill teams, as Private Gruckheimer first revealed eight years ago, that, that they're ordered to go into villages and kill babies, and everyone. Yeah, I mean, uh, it's just ridiculous. See, you look at uh, you look at what's going on in the Middle East, North Africa right now. Uh, okay, uh, the president of Algeria brutally put down demonstrations in Algiers, but he's a good f friend of Sarkozy in, in France. He's a good friend of ours. We're not seeing no-fly zones established over Algeria, for example. Uh, we now have several Yemeni generals, many of whom were part of this regime in Yemen, corrupt as all get out now saying, oh, we're with the opposition. That looks to me like the CIA is trying to also co-opt uh, the Yemeni uh, revolution, just like they did the Libyan revolution. And uh, obviously they want uh, President Saleh gone, just like they wanted Gaddafi gone. This is an attempt by the CIA to basically take over uh, the revolutions where they see fit. And in places like Bahrain with those poor people, now uh, they're going into hospitals and shooting people who are being treated in hospitals in Bahrain, blowing up the the Pearl Square Monument because it was seen as a uh, sort of a rallying point for the opposition. But Bahrain is a, a host a U.S. naval base. Uh, uh, we don't see any no-fly zone being put over Bahrain. And where's the no-fly zone over Israel? So they they stop uh, attacking uh, defenseless Palestinians in Gaza and the West Bank. We don't see any no-fly zone there. This is very selective. Uh, this is this is a typical neocon operation. Well, since the, when is a no-fly zone? British special forces backing Al Qaeda rebels. Ah, uh, well, it was just like Iraq and uh, under under Clinton, uh, no-fly zone over Iraq, and we had all kinds of uh, special forces going in, uh, penetrating the border through the Kurdish uh, no-fly zone area to get Saddam Hussein. This is the same uh, playbook being used all over again. What's the end game? We'll talk about that straight ahead. Why are they doing this? Then Fukushima. Then your calls. Wayne Metz. Wayne, getting back to Tripoli and getting back to this new U.N. precedent where the U.N. gives an order and NATO and America jumps, obviously because it's their puppet they created to have this illusion of international solidarity, but it's the Security Council doing this, not outside nations, uh, you know, the 160-plus that aren't part of the Security Council, but having those 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 ground invasion ships, those amphibious d delivery systems off the coast with tens of thousands of troops, having Hillary say and Obama say, you will submit to us, you will allow an international aid force in, which means the military, or else, 
uh, they're basically gearing up for an invasion, a, a ground invasion. Do you disagree with that? Well, obviously, that if, there, if they've got these troop ships off the uh, coast with Marines, um, uh, that, that's a real contingency that they're considering. And, and uh, it, it seems like even Secretary of Defense Gates may have been overruled on this, believe that or not. I mean, he's a holdover from the Bush administration, but he was never too keen on this operation. Uh, I, I think he, of all people, know how uh, thin... U.S. forces are spread right now. We're in Afghanistan. We're in Iraq. We're, we've got this covert war in Pakistan. We've been involved with Yemen uh, and now Libya. And I, I would also note that a very interesting uh, interview was given by General Wesley Clark. Now, I'm certainly no big fan of his, especially after what he did to Yugoslavia, former Yugoslavia. But he said that after 9-11, he met a colleague in the Pentagon who said, uh, listen, we're, we're going to invade Iraq. He said, what do you mean Iraq? What, 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 what's going on? He said, well, there's a plan that we're going to go into Iraq. We're going to go into Syria. We're going to go into Libya. And there was a couple other countries. And eventually we're going to go into Iran. So it seems like wh whoever this guy was who told uh, Clark this uh, was on the money also. And, and uh, we see Obama just carrying out this same plan that was hatched by the neocons under George W. Bush. You're absolutely on target again, Wayne, and under this new precedent, if people rebel, then the West invades, that's pointed right at Iran. Oh, I think Iran is, is and, and I think what's happening now in Bahrain, where you have a, lar a, a majority Shia population, you had the king of Bahrain now try to justify his bloody crackdown on the uh, opposition by saying, well, Iran was involved. Well, he didn't say, he said uh, outside parties. Well, we know he's talking about. Uh, and they had the Saudi troops come across the Causeway Bridge into uh, Bahrain, and, and, and just uh, there's videos of them just shooting people at point-blank range, just like that, that infamous photo of that South Vietnamese uh, police off uh, uh, high-ranking officer shooting that uh, suspected Viet Cong in the head. We have videos coming out of Bahrain. Where's the no-fly zone over Bahrain? We don't hear Hillary Clinton talking about that or Barack Obama. Barack Obama was in Brazil as these, uh, this uh, military action was launched. Brazil voted against, uh, well, they, they basically uh, abstained um, in the Security Council on this on this resolution. All right, Wayne, they, they we got a break. Yep. Stay there. When we come back, we're going to start taking calls. But then later in the next 20 minutes, I'm going to bring up the biggest issue yet. They're saying Gaddafi's probably going to launch terror attacks. Will the globalists launch a false flag to legitimize the war? The Daily Mail is reporting Colonel Gaddafi's son killed in Kamikaze pilot attack on Tripoli barracks. But we don't know if any of that's true because so much just information is put out as war propaganda by the British, like Gaddafi racing to uh, Venezuela or running to Zimbabwe or being killed. Uh, we've heard it all, uh, but it is certainly intensifying. Also, the report talks about rebel fighters finding any Gaddafi supporters, tying their hands and killing them. But that's humanitarian and good. Wayne Madsen is our guest. We're going to get into the big issue after the break before we go to more calls dealing with uh, USI's terror response by Qaddafi, perfect to legitimize the war, perfect to have domestic crackdowns, perfect to get approval ratings up. We'll talk to Wayne about that coming up, but right now calls for Wayne Madsen, who joins us via video Skype from D.C. Mark in Oregon, you're on the air. Hello, Alex and Wayne. I um, would like to make a very short statement and then get your comments, if you would please give them. Uh, we're at a point now where it's not humanly possible to back this evil down. That's my firm opinion, and I believe that even more so because God himself has said, the God of creation has said, that without him we can do nothing. And do you believe that there's any way outside of relying upon God through a sincere repentance for our national... No, no Mark, I agree with you. We've got to change our hearts, and then God will lift us up as vessels to, to expose evil. That's why the globalists sell us on torture and corruption, because they know it makes us morally weak. I appreciate your call. Comments on that, Wayne Madsen? Well, I'll tell you, you know, can anything be done? Saturday I was at an anti-war demonstration at Lafayette Park across from the White House, and this is what I saw in, uh, in the first time I saw all this in Washington, I know under Bush it happened in other uh, locations. Yeah, they arrested him for not having a permit. Was, 
They, they did, and they kettled, and the cops kettled everyone into a fenced-in area, and if you didn't get out of that area like I did, you were subject to arrest and a $500 fine. Now, Daniel Ellsberg was one of them. They, some people knew they were going to be arrested, but uh, they used the mounted uh, police, one of the mounted horses, kettled everyone into this fenced-in area, and, 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 the, and the tourists, and the, uh, there was a couple pro uh, anti qaddafi protesters. All those people, nine, there was 9-11 Truth was there. Uh, all those people, uh, if they stayed in the uh, kettled in area, they risked arrest. So everybody was forced to leave who didn't want to be arrested. I did not see that kind of activity under Bush, but I saw it under Obama. So uh, in, 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 when it comes to exercising your, your, your uh, uh, free speech rights, your uh, freedom of assembly, it does not apply. At, at Lafayette Square, and it crossed my mind. Uh, it crossed my mind what what I don't think they want to have happen on Pennsylvania Avenue and Lafayette Park is a Tahrir Square, and this was a clear indication. If we ever tried to have a Tahrir Square in Washington, in front of the White House, it would be put down. You know, it would be put down uh, as fast as anything. Well, Wayne. And, uh, so that yeah. was that was my next point. Is that no protest zones you can't protest in the park in, in land of the free home of the brave but then egypt allowed the protest to go on and that was evil and horrible because they didn't hand the government over to the mob because the west wanted it i mean th this is an illustration of the tyrants that run our country oh absolutely uh, and you know i remember under bush we had uh, probably between 250 and 300,000 anti-war demonstrators at several of these Wayne, I gotta stop you. Your Skype is, is, is unintelligible. We're gonna try to reconnect or we may just go to phone with Wayne Madsen. It's great technology to be able to have him with us here on PrisonPlanet.tv and streaming to all the radio stations, but uh, we're gonna fiddle with that during the break or maybe go audio only over his Skype. Try to fix that breakup. And then we'll continue with Tim, Ben, JB, Ronnie, uh, and others that are patiently holding. We'll also get more on Wayne's take on the whole Fukushima unfolding cover-up. Now out of sight, out of mind. We've been uh, talking about all the different facets of the globalist destabilization program in the Middle East with investigative journalists, formerly of the National Security Agency, Wayne Madsen. And we're going to go to your phone calls here in a moment and segue uh, and get his take on the Fukushima unfolding crisis that's uh, worsening right now, uh, the press reports show. But it's, it's not the big news item now because uh, everybody loves a new war. It's so entertaining and makes a lot of men out there feel good about themselves uh, through the new world order that controls our country and that is bankrupting us. Uh, there's a lot of high-fiving. A lot of people are watching it at bars and they're not watching sports right now uh, they're very very excited and feeling powerful through this mass murder they're also celebrating and feeling very proud about photos of u.s kill teams with dead children that they pose with uh... this is our journey into evil very sick to see america turn into a instrument of the globalist uh... but this london telegraph article came out sunday we also wrote about it before they did i'm proud of that fact u.s government backs libyan al-qaeda while hyping terror attacks inside u.s and uh, here's the London Telegraph, the West and Al-Qaeda on the same side. Uh, CNN also ran a similar headline. Uh, but uh, the big issue came out today, and they're certainly pushing this now, Wayne. U.S. eyes Gaddafi terror response, and they have indeed killed one of his sons as they killed his daughter decades ago. He might actually do something, which then allows them to, in the minds of people, how dare him fight back? That's terror. Uh, then launch a ground invasion. That's why they're so arrogant and, and, and full of bravado right now, in my view. And the White House memos talk about how great a terror attack would be to boost overall police state approval ratings for the TSA, who's on the ropes, the federal police state, the spy grid. I see it in the cards for them to stage a false flag or allow it to take place to try to bolster uh, their, uh, their, their expanded takeover. Wayne Madsen, your take on that. Well, I think it's it's hogwash. Uh, say, uh, uh, Gaddafi was linked uh, uh, to some terrorist groups, but we're talking about the 1980s, and of course, he was a, he was the uh, bad guy du jour in those days, um, um, linked to the Irish Republican Army and the Bas terrorists. But he he, he gave all these networks up uh, in r return for uh, having this. Uh, uh, 
uh, new deal with these Western countries. So I think the, the idea that Gaddafi, who's basically got it enough to worry about inside Libya, could, uh, you know, uh, somehow call up these old uh, cells uh, from the 1980s and 70s is just ridiculous. It's more neocon propaganda. But what about like the heard. issue of the neocon staging a terror attack as an excuse to ground invade and to crack down domestically? Well, I think that's always a fear from the neocons. I mean, that's that's how they operate. That's a, that's their modus operandi. We've seen it time and time again in, in so many of these false flag attacks. Uh, so the, the, the mere thought that they're uh, saying, well, Gaddafi may uh, go the terrorist route, I think, is uh, trying to lay the groundwork for that uh, distinct possibility that we may see something happen in Europe or the United States. More, more likely it would happen in Europe and more likely it would happen in one of the countries that was not keen on getting involved in this uh, adventure, and that, that would be Germany, Turkey, and, and a few other NATO countries who just didn't want any part of this. Exactly. And folks, it's been declassified that our criminal government stages terror attacks on a routine basis. That is a fact. One of the chief ones, Gulf of Tonkin, to get us into Vietnam. Let's talk to Tim in Washington. No, no, Marshall in Texas is first. Marshall in Texas, you're on the air. Good afternoon, gentlemen. Uh, I just want to bring up, uh, you spoke earlier on in the show when you spoke of Libya, uh, that they were going under the, under the guise of humanitarianism. This might set the precedent for them to do so here under unrest, whether it be the government creating the unrest and coming down on us, or whether it be just to set the precedent that they need to be the ones coming in so that this doesn't happen. Well, we saw what happened yesterday in Lafayette Park. Peaceful pro-war and anti-war protesters kettled and arrested in mass. No protest allowed in America. Uh, the very tyranny they're decrying in Libya. Wayne Madsen. Well, absolutely. And, you know, the, talk about, you know, going into a country under the guise of humanitarian assistance. Remember when George H.W. Bush was a lame duck president at the end of 1992, he went into Somalia, supposedly, uh, uh, for humanitarian purposes. And then when Bill Clinton became president, he decides he's going to start to do nation building, which we saw 18 U.S. Army Rangers uh, killed in Mogadishu as a result of that, that, that uh, entirely messed up operation. Now, We've been there before. We went into Haiti, I don't know how many times, quote unquote, for humanitarian missions. It isn't funny, Obama, Obama, he had no problem with baby Doc going back to Haiti, but he, he, he didn't want the rightful president who was ousted in a U.S. coup, uh, uh, jean Bertrand Aristide, returning from exile imposed by the United States and France and South Africa. Uh, so, so we have uh, the humanitarian, look, U.S. Agency for International Development, which, which is the the big humanitarian organization is nothing more than a CIA front and has been for a long time. Mm -hmm. And we know whose mom, dear old mom, worked for them for many years. And that was Stanley Ann Dunham, Obama, Satoro, you know, whatever, how many names she had. But Thank um, you, Marshall. So uh, 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 I want to go to Tim, Ben, uh, and uh, JB and others here. And, and, and then we'll keep you to the bottom of the hour before our next guest because I want to spend that next little five-minute segment on the reactor continual uh, meltdown that's happening. But in your gut, Wayne, watching this for a long time, reporting from Capitol Hill, calling a lot of things before they happen, in your gut, how do you see this ending? What are the different scenarios and what do you think most probable among them? Well, I think what we're going to see is a uh, is a U.S. Uh, military, U.S., British, French, and some Italian military uh, involvement in this what is essentially now a civil war in Libya. I think we're going to see a uh, a pro. Uh, U.S. Western government installed, uh, at least in Benghazi. Uh, I don't know how long uh, Gaddafi can hold on. Uh, there are reports that he had mercenaries uh, from other countries uh, in, in Libya. But uh, if, if this goes to a full full uh, scale um, uh, military uh, occupation invasion, I, I think uh, Gaddafi just can't hold hold out that much longer. Uh, he's got uh, basically Tripoli, and, and now the rebels are moving to reclaim some of the cities his forces took uh, in the last uh, couple of weeks. So basically, the globalist-backed forces started losing, and so the big air power came in to back them. 
Yeah, and I think they've got a lot of Ahmed Chalabi. You know, he's a guy uh, we put in Iraq, uh, sort of an international con artist and, and crook. Uh, we've got a lot of Libyans who have lived outside of Libya for a number of years in London and Washington and elsewhere. I think we're probably going to see an attempt to put one of those characters uh, in, in charge in Libya, and he'll be well, uh, every bit in, in our court as uh, the, that puppet guy we have in Iraq right now. Well, I, and, and of course, Iraq's now one of the only Arab countries actually endorsing this. The Arab League and its support has fallen apart. They were all for a no-fly zone, but not for the bombardment and the special forces uh, there on the ground. But I do see them trying to at least break the country in two. The, uh, from the east and then continue to launch attacks from the east. Cameron, the British Prime Minister, has basically echoed that, saying that the bombardment is all that's going to be happening and that the Libyans better, quote, decide this for themselves. So they're telling the rebels it's up to you now. Right. Well, I think the rebels probably, now that uh, we've uh, changed the game with uh, Tomahawk cruise missiles, isn't that nice? The United States likes to you stand off weapons at first because uh, you know it, it, you know it's easy to push a button and kill 50 people on the other end of that that Tomahawk cruise missile. But eventually, I think we're going to see some of our ground troops. They're probably already there. We don't know about it yet. And uh, uh, as you mentioned, uh, that the, the heinous crimes being committed in places like Afghanistan against civilians, we're we're probably seeing that already happen in Libya, except it's not being reported. Tim in Washington, you're on the air with Wayne Madsen. Hey, how's it going, Alex? I had a couple points for you real fast, and uh, I was just kind of curious on my math here, because according to my math, that Chernobyl meltdown for 10 days with all the reactors compiled, we were looking at a total of 32 Chernobyl days so far in Fukushima uh, due to its uh, rate of... Most of the physicists uh, and doctors we've had on have said that this is bigger than Chernobyl and that there's been a whole bunch of there's four reactors with partial meltdowns 600,000 plus spent fuel rods sprayed everywhere Wayne what's your take on this well I think obviously we know that just like with Chernobyl and Three Mile Island what we're getting is being downplayed by the politicians and the nuclear the very powerful nuclear power industry this is a very very powerful lobby because unlike uh, other energy lobbies, they have to deal with the government to get the nuclear material to start these plants. So there's there's already a too close of a relationship between the industry and the government. Uh, I, I think basically what I'm hearing from people in Japan, uh, it, it is much worse. Uh, of course, uh, the Japanese broadcaster NHK is run by the government, and, we're, and, and they've been downplaying a lot of this also. Uh, but uh, the, the private media is telling me uh, that it, it is much worse. We're talking about the Tokyo metropolitan region, Tokyo, Yokohama. People are now leaving. The Swiss embassy has moved the embassy from Tokyo to Osaka. So has so the U.S. military. What does that tell you about how serious this really is? That it's very serious. And they're and, telling us the I, fallout's no big deal on the West Coast when the real radiation hasn't even gotten here yet. Well, and we've had our politicians tell us that Three Mile Island, 1979, Governor Thornburg uh, of Pennsylvania stated, uh, he said there's no problem. He waited three days before telling pregnant women around Three Mile Island that it's time for you to evacuate when he knew how bad it was three days prior. So we've seen this play out so many times. Chernobyl, the cover-up by the Soviet government, helped lead to their demise because they covered that up. But any time we see these reactor incidents, and well, now we know TEPCO was fudging on the safety inspections because TEPCO is very right, Wayne, close stay to there. the uh, government oversight. Yeah, stay there. We're going to come right back. Did that? Uh, do you have anything else to add, Tim, in Washington? Yes, I got a couple other things, if you don't mind. Yeah, stay there. Tim, straight ahead. We'll try to cram in a few others. And we'll continue with calls when Tarpley joins us as well. One more segment with Wayne Madsen. I'm Alex Jones, InfoWars.com. Here's the headline at InfoWars.com. It just went live. Let's send Ann Coulter to Fukushima. I was going to play the clip, but we're almost out of time. I may play it later and tease Tarpley, a big nuclear power fan. Uh, but Human Events has the headline, a glowing report on radiation by Ann Coulter. Anyone exposed to excess radiation from the nuclear power plants is now probably much less likely to get cancer. That's, I guess her, her thought is you aim it directly at a cancer, it hurts that cell, that group of, of abnormal cells. But general radiation of the whole body in every major study is, I mean, that's not even debated. 
it massively increases cancer. I mean, even our own government estimates a million deaths in the 25 years associated with Chernobyl. But, I mean, this is just brazen propaganda saying the radiation is good for you, Wayne Madsen. Well, you know, Ann Coulter, have you noticed she hasn't really been on the news recently? So she had to say, he, she, he, whatever that is, I had to say something uh, to get back into the n news uh, cycle. And the more outrageous, of course, that's how, uh, that's what the Fox News is well, all about. The more outrageous, the better. Well, I don't and, like, uh, I don't like to interrupt in the time we've got. I don't like to be mean about how somebody looks because, I mean, I'm not the most beautiful person on the planet. <laughs> but at the 2004 Republican c convention, I was going in the front entrance and waiting for some people and saw her walking in, and I was actually scared. Yeah, I mean, she, I, no, 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 I'm not joking. I was repulsed because she's so anorexic, you don't see it on TV because it adds yeah. weight, that she, she was having trouble walking, and she looked like a concentration camp victim, like a, like a skull with skin on it, painted with lipstick, and she was actually toddling in like a undead. No, I'm, I was like, huh. I mean, my actual, yeah. I've never run into anybody that made me go, huh, and actually take a breath in. Yeah, well, I, 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 maybe that's if she's so emaciated. That's we think that's an Adam's apple, maybe or thorax. I don't know, but uh, uh, the, 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 the or larynx. Uh, but uh, I, I just don't uh, uh, understand people. Uh, you know, the, the, the broadcaster is supposed to serve the common interest, the public good, and that's definitely not that doesn't serve any public good. Uh, but uh, one thing I'm hearing from people in Japan is uh, it's it's no good to send money because they have money they can't buy anything with it so what they have nothing off the shelves now in tokyo and yokohama uh the ramen noodles so if anybody has friends family uh, colleagues over there this is you know small packages so it's not held up in customs uh those ramen noodles powdered milk tri uh, triple a double a batteries this is what they're out of and this is what they're they're in, in, in this this now this is the third largest economy in the world they just china of course just surpassed them as the second largest but this is what can happen to an infrastructure when they have a triple disaster like they've experienced in closing wayne um give us your summation of how bad the disaster really is the radiation cover-up and the fact that they're saying this could go on for weeks or months uh, headlines about the relief not going well reactor still smoking burning hundreds of thousands of fuel rods, uh, and uh, it seems to be now kind of just going out of the news. Well, this is what I understand. The chief cabinet secretary, Adama, uh, he cut his teeth politically as an anti-nuclear activist. So what I'm hearing is that there are people in TEPCO and the uh, Nuclear Oversight Agency who don't want to tell him a lot of what's going on because they're afraid he's going to amplify it and make it sound much, well, it is worse than what they're saying, but they don't necessarily trust him, and that's why he's not getting the full picture, and he's the public face of the Japanese government at all these news conferences. So there is a willful attempt by the TEPCO and the nuclear oversight people in Japan to keep uh, a, a critical information, uh, the worst case information from uh, members of the government, including the chief cabinet secretary. Well, it's not a good sign when the U.S. military, U.S. embassies, French, German, pull out when foreign airlines won't fly into Tokyo, when the fleet raced away last Monday when Fukushima 3 blew up, and now when the head of the plant itself breaks down and cries and says, basically, I can't lie to you, this radiation is going to kill people, uh, that's, that, that shows you what's really happening. Right, and we have to be worried here about the uh, radiation that's coming uh, over the West Coast because well, we know that uh, uh, based on what we saw with the Gulf oil disaster, uh, how our own government uh, downplays the uh, health effects of these uh, natural disasters. The other thing I want to add quickly is I, I'm afraid we may see the international bankers, these vampires, vultures, and vermin now try to uh, uh, play this up as much as they can to uh, try to just put... Japan, the third largest economy in the world, under their firm control. Meanwhile, a headline up at Drudge, also on Infowars.com. White House works quietly to squelch the, the photos. They've already released photos of them killing kids. Uh, so, man, Wayne Madsen, thank you for joining us. We'll be right back yeah. with Dr. Tarpley. Visit Infowars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day.
to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. Going now to Webster Griffin Tarpley, who's written the unauthorized biography of Barack Obama, George Herbert Walker Bush, uh, and who three years ago, before Obama even got in office, said this will be the kamikaze model of playing states off against each other, funding CIA, MI6 uh, uh, groups to try to overthrow the Muslim nations, because this has all been stated as their plan, then coming in with air power behind them to back them up. What does this signify that Germany and Turkey have broken away from NATO? What does it signify for the first time ever to have the UN issue the order and in less than 48 hours, about 26 hours, attacks to be launched with no congressional involvement? We're seeing some big moves here. What does it signify? Webster Griffin Tarpley. Well, I would say, first of all, that the, the fact that the NATO... Uh, and Obama have had to use uh, military force. They've had to bomb Libya back into the Stone Age with massacres of civilians. This is a defeat for them because their plan had been to use the model of the color revolution, the CIA people power coup, the National Endowment for Democracy putsch from behind the scenes to do this all without military force. That was what they were able to do in Tunisia and then in Egypt. And of course, the reality is that there's a military coup going on behind the scenes, and then you have this clown show of street demonstrations that the media try to uh, say is actually causing it, whereas, of course, it's not causing it, it's just window dressing. Something like this is going on in Yemen today. There's a military coup behind the scenes. Some top general and a tribal leader have turned against the president of Yemen, and you have street demonstrations. But the reality is the coup. Now Obama is obviously embarrassed. You can see the, the sneaky, cowardly way that Obama started this war. Obama does not have the guts to give a, an Oval Office speech and look the American people in like the eye. Like George W. Bush did. Yeah, even George W. Bush was a very blunt uh, aggressor. He was an imperialist aggressor, and he made no bones about it, and he looked you in the eye and said, I'm an imperialist aggressor, but with Obama, it's all deception. And we have this charade going on. The U.S. is obviously the leading edge of the attack. The 125 cruise missiles fired in the night between uh, Saturday and Sunday. That's the, that's the main guts of this attack. But instead, we have the British and the French in some way... In, in this charade, this, this dumb show, where they pretend to be the leading edge, and of course they, they are not. Uh, the French were able to get, I think, all of 15, one five aircraft over, uh, over uh, Cyrenaic, over Libya, on, the, on Saturday. That's, that's pathetic. Uh, but the U.S. cruise missiles are the ones that are doing the work. And now I think what you're seeing, though, because of this attempt... To, to have propaganda showing the British and the French in the lead, this is going to lead to, to military chaos in the command and control structure. Because you already have the following situation. The Italians say, we will not allow Britain and France to use these critical bases, Sigonella in Sicily and elsewhere. We want the NATO command to do this, because we're Italy. We're not subjected to Britain and France. We are part of NATO. But then the French say, no, we can't do that because we have these Arab puppet states that we want to participate. We have Qatar, the Al Jazeera uh, base. And by the way, a lot of them are starting to back out right now and having reservations because of how bad it looks at home. Right. Uh, and, and that's it, that, the Qatar and the United Arab Emirates. Now, the, today in Cairo, we had a meeting of the Arab League. And, of course, this Amir Musa, the head of the Arab League, had been out in front demanding a no-fly zone. But... This is a guy who wants to be president of Egypt, and he can see that the Arab street, the Arab marketplace, is now turning against the U.S. once again and against NATO because of this, this massacre that's going on. So we had this. And even if they don't like Gaddafi, you got to root for the underdog. Well, they, they don't like imperialist aggression, and uh, Gaddafi is looking better and better by the hour. We had Ban Ki moon, the U.S. puppet who is the, Na the U.N. Secretary General. He wanted to go to Tahrir Square and strut and posture and preen himself as a hero of democracy. And these, the Egyptian protesters have finally done something good. The Egyptian protesters are finally fighting the imperialists 
instead of acting as their as their tools, they wouldn't let Ban Ki Moon make his triumphal tour of Tahrir Square. And as you mentioned, Germany was never in this. They, they have uh, tremendous doubts. The Turks are uh, not happy. The Italians are the least happy of all. But they're they're so weak that they don't know what to do. Uh, interestingly, today Putin Putin says the the UN resolution is in effect a medieval call for a crusade against Libya. And Putin has drawn the lesson himself. He has ordered the doubling of Russian missile production so they can see the handwriting on the wall. Naturally, the fact that Russia and China did not veto this monstrosity last week in the United they Nations... They abstained. This was, this was not a profile in courage, to put it mildly. Uh, they could have stopped it. They should well, have Webster, let it. me stop you there. Why are the globalists moving in such a naked way now? Why, what is triggering this? It is the war on the nation state itself. If you look at the Tarpley.net or my Twitter feed, Webster G. Tarpley, I, I go through this question of all the countries in the Middle East are looking for a way to get out of the Anglo-American plantation. They don't want to be subjected to the United States anymore. In order to do that, you've got to make a deal with Russia, which Saudi Arabia had been doing. You've got to make a deal with China. That was the path chosen by, by Algeria, by, uh, by Pakistan. Or you make a deal with Iran, and that was what Mubarak had been doing and, and many others. So in order to get out of the empire, You've got to turn to some other power source, and that basically comes down to Russia, China, and in, to some degree, Iran. The U.S.-British answer to that is, well, if we can't control these puppet states anymore, these satraps or viceroys of our empire, we will destroy them. So you can see what they're going for. Sudan has been carved into two parts, mainly to prevent the Chinese from getting the oil in South Sudan. That's their bare minimum in Libya. They want to break it with their group break in the it, east. And, and, and break it. breaking it in this case means, in the case of Libya, it means an attempted return to tribalism with the tribes of Cyrenaica against the tribes of Tripolitania, the east against so the So that's west. the post-industrial tribal balkanization model. Call it tribalism, call it warlords. It's the destruction of the nation state. So, in effect, if you want to defend human civilization, you have to take your stand in defense of the modern nation state. Not with the secessionists. You can see what it is, right? The guys in Cyrenaica are the secessionists. Yemen is being carved on a north south axis. Pakistan, the whole goal of that guy, Ray Davis, there, that, that uh, he's accused by the Pakistanis of being a terrorist controller dealing in nuclear materials for a radio... But what triggered them to do something this dangerous? Uh, You've always I mean, said as the dollar starts to die, they were going to start a war to basically threaten everybody. Well, it, you, you, if you look, uh, I, I go through, I have a grid in this article that I've done on, on Topley.net. You go through the grid, and you can see that, that all of these countries, Algeria has got 40,000 Chinese workers building things, right? What do the Anglo-Americans offer? The Anglo-Americans come in there and they say, free market, free trade, deregulate, privatize, bust your unions, break up the state sector, IMF shock therapy, and of course that means you're going to be destroyed. And the, the West also then says, we're also going to meddle in your internal affairs under the... So the bankers are declaring war basically on everyone. We're going to put your article up on screen from Tarpley.net. We're also going to post it, uh, we forgot to do that at Infowars.com right now. Marley's doing that. But, but I mean, so this is a desperation move, is it not? Yes, it's, it's essentially a, a, a simultaneous assault on the nation state uh, all across the world. Uh, and the, the leading edge is WikiLeaks. WikiLeaks last week published new documents proving that the president of Indonesia is corrupt and bribed. Uh, and you can see they're going through the entire the CIA hit list is reflected in the choice of documents that come out with, with WikiLeaks. So WikiLeaks, I think, is, is clearly exposed as a CIA limited hangout self-exposure self operation. But the targets of this are the governments that they want to overthrow. So uh, it, has, it has parallels to the revolutions of 1848. You can see that in, in some, some other stuff that I've written. But the idea is to have a wave of destabilizations that leaves either the nations themselves shattered and divided and balkanized and carved, or maybe in some place like Egypt, which is harder to split up, uh, a government that is so weak and so passive and pathetic that it can easily be, be ordered around. Okay, Webster, uh, what's the name of the headline of the article that you want us to put on screen? 
Well, I would. The, the, the most recent one I did was Obama's Bay of Pigs. Yeah, that's but, the one we've got. Where is this grid? Because I'm going to put it on screen. The grid is the the previous one. Uh, it's it's the one about. Um, it's, it's it's essentially behind the uh, the orgy of destabilizations. You've got. Uh, I think that's the beginning of the title. Behind the orgy of destabilizations is an attempt. So, by where the do the West. globalists go next after this? Uh, well, today it's Yemen, uh, Bahrain. Again, Bahrain is targeted because they, they, the Bahrain royal family told the U.S. you're not allowed to use the base of the Fifth Fleet to attack Iran. Uh, Algeria is a target. Algeria is the other country in North Africa that has a lot of oil, uh, and that's the place where they've, tr they've tried to play the China card, right? Bouteflika has turned to the Chinese for infrastructure and development, and they're, they're, they're building everything. They're building highways and, and uh, all sorts of uh, infrastructure that the West, of course, refuses to provide. So, uh, and then Indonesia, you can look towards them. Uh, I expect there's a good possibility of a shooting war with Pakistan if the United States becomes bogged down now in Libya, especially if the uh, ground invasion of Libya occurs, which I think is an eminent possibility. I don't see Gaddafi's forces being destroyed by this... Uh, this bombing attack, uh, maybe when the U.S. gets bogged down in Libya, the people in Pakistan will say, now it's time for us to, uh, to invite the U.S. to leave, which means to cut that supply line that goes from Karachi to uh, the Khyber Pass, the main, the main supply line. The other thing to, to stress is the weakness of the imperialists. In 1991, when Bush the Elder attacked Iraq, he had 1,500 combat aircraft, 1,500. In 1999, when Clinton, Gore, and, and Blair struck at Serbia, they had 150 sorties the first day. This time around, 15, 15 French aircraft. Now, there were then the 125 cruise missiles. But in terms of manned aircraft, <laughs> the imperialists are going down, down, down. And I think um, Gaddafi has some surprises up his sleeve in a military sense. Why don't we say we don't want to find out what those are? Let's call a halt to this thing. Uh, it's time for a Democratic primary challenge to Obama. I don't know what anybody's waiting for. Obama All right, well, let me stop you there. Longer. Let me stop you there, Tarpley, because while we've got you in limited time, I want to look at what you just raised. We've got incredible hype right now that Gaddafi's going to launch terror attacks in Europe or the U.S. That will be then used as the excuse to push the full ground invasion and as a domestic police state clampdown to legitimize the TSA, the spy grid, uh, I think that fits into their overall stratagem or strategies, uh, their deceptive strategy, uh, to stage a terror attack. I think that's a real danger. Well, they, they were harping on this repeatedly with Saddam Hussein, right? In 1991 for the first Gulf War and then in 2003, they were, har they were harping and hyping on this and it, it never happened. So I don't see that at all. I think Gaddafi is too smart for that kind of stuff. No, they may stage it. God, they may stage it, but I'm trying to say this won't be coming from Gaddafi. Now, going back to ground invasion, you think that's in the offing? They've got the invasion ships off the shore, the troop ships. Give us your breakdown of why you think that could be imminent. Well, you're dealing with the French-British imperialists. Now, this is the Suez Coalition of 1956. This has special characteristics. On the British side, these guys are the Colonel Blimps, right? They're the... the uh, the British generals who, you know, their, their latest exploits have been in Northern Ireland. Uh, they're, they're essentially coming from a tradition of military losers. And on the French side, it's another tradition of military losers, going back to Vichy and Marshal Pétain. So this is not a pretty thing. But they're now claiming uh, that the, the British and the French are going to take it over. Uh, the military forces of the French and the British are obsolete. The British are flying still these tornado jet aircraft, the tornadoes, Saddam Hussein shot down seven tornadoes 20 years ago in the first Gulf War. Yeah, in the first two days, so they withdrew them from the field yeah, of battle. They, these are not reliable planes. They're old. Now, there is this uh, Eurofighter Typhoon. That's ultra-modern, but the other problem is that it's never been used in combat, so nobody, nobody knows what the bugs might be. The truth is they haven't been running around like the U.S. engaged in constant wars, so they're not good at it, like uh, the United States is drenched in blood. We've spent an inordinate amount of time on the North African situation. This sets an incredible precedent where the UN calls the shots as the puppet of the globalist 
now there's protests in other countries. Will they invade them? That clearly is their fake moral high ground. Webster, I don't want to hear how you want to have this end. Sure, with a Democrat coming out as truly anti-war and a challenger to Obama, the, the empire is going bankrupt. We can't have four wars. List those four wars. But instead, how do you see this ending? Where do you see this going? Well, the wars, of course, are the Iraq War, which continues. The U.S. is incapable of imposing the puppet Alawi that they want, and the pro-Iranian Maliki remains in power. That's a very serious index to the weakness of the, of the U.S., which you could see all last year. Second one, of course, is Afghanistan, where Karzai said last week, NATO must get out of my country. Get out. And then, they, of course, they walked it back. And now we have these atrocities, the photos that, you, that you're referring to. Pakistan uh, has been a war of the United States against Pakistan since the West Point speech by Obama in December of 2009. Where it's clear the goal is to export the Afghan civil war into Pakistan, break it up along those lines, Punjab, Sindh, Balochistan, Pashtunistan, four to five ways, split it up so it can't be an energy corridor between Iran and, uh, and China. And now we have Libya, um, and I, I think the, uh, the, the, the guaranteed result, unless somebody does something unexpected, let's put it that way, is a further uh, decline in world civilization. Because Libya is the most developed country in Africa. Libya has a higher position on the uh, United Nations Human Development Index than Russia, Ukraine, Brazil, or Venezuela. They're, they, Gaddafi has done a better job than anybody in the Middle East when it comes to spreading the oil wealth around to the people. They've got, they've got fewer people in jail than the Czech Republic, and of course far fewer than the U.S. per, per population. So this is now in the process of being destroyed. The, the imperialist plan is to have the country uh, permanently split and to, to have maybe two or three different tribal coalitions contending. It would go back to what it was uh, under, the, uh, under the Italian occupation, under Mar Marshal Graziani, Back in the in the 1920s and, and 30s, it's essentially a bunch and, of and Mussolini nomads. went in there too. And pardon me? Didn't Mussolini go into Libya too? Yes, that's what I'm saying. That's it. these were generals working for for Mussolini, and they they of course committed uh, tremendous atrocities. So uh, it's essentially the decline of civilization itself, unless somebody does something. Unexpected. It's the bankers, for those that don't know what a hostile takeover and a breakup is, they come into real companies or, or, or countries that have wealth and they just break it all up and sell it for pennies on the dollar, basically give it to themselves. They're doing this to the whole world right now. Yes, and of course now, there, there are other, other possibilities. You look at Egypt now, uh, I think encouraging news this morning is that the Egyptian protesters have finally figured something out, that, that uh, Ban Ki-moon and, and Musa are imperialists, and uh, this is not, not good. Uh, are there nationalist colonels in the Egyptian army? Are there people in the Egyptian army who are disgusted by the behavior of Field Marshal Tantawi and this clique of generals who forced Mubarak uh, out of the country? Uh, if there are some colonels in the tradition of Nasser from the 1950s, that would be that would be something good. Um, if you have uh, similar forces, maybe in Algeria, uh, that's the, those are also possibilities. I think the other thing is we've got to realize that the the entire operation violates the U, the UN Charter. The UN Charter says that Chapter Seven military measures can only be used to restore international peace and security. Never for interfering in the internal affairs of sovereign states. In this case, this is pure interference in the internal affairs of a sovereign state. It is illegal under the charter. And this it points to why the United Nations is totally unworkable. Because you have this, this, this gaggle of five... Webster, permanent... Webster, we're out of time. We'll talk to you again soon this okay. week. Infowars.com, tarpley.net, gcnlive.com. We'll cover all the radiation tomorrow. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want.